Today we're going to talk about the competition. xCloud, Parsec, Shadow, GeForce Now, and PlayStation Now. My name is Jason with another Stadia Breakdown, and this is Inevitable Space. So this is a culmination of information I could find. So if I leave anything out, let me know in the comments down below. If there's misinterpretation or information that's incorrect, you can also let me know down below and I'll do my best to fix that. There are new services popping up every now and then. So if you would like me to do another comparison video, I can certainly do that. Again, let me know in the comments down below. Before I get started, I just wanna make sure you understand the term flops. I'm gonna be using this to compare GPU performance. Although this is not the sole factor that determines GPU performance, it is a very important number and can be used to somewhat accurately compare GPU devices. So I wanna start off by talking to you about what Stadia brings us as for any comparison. Chrome OS is the minimum requirement for Stadia and aside from having a high enough internet speed, that's really not a difficult minimum spec to meet. The pricing is at $10 a month for Stadia Pro, but Stadia Base is free, but you do have to pay for games at full price. With Stadia Pro, you do get discounted games, but we have no discount percentage yet, so we do not know what that looks like. The specifications are pretty solid, giving you 16 gigabytes of RAM, as far as we know, unlimited storage, 10.7 teraflops of GPU power, which is insane amount and they actually compared this to the current Xbox and PlayStation 4 and showed us that Stadia holds more GPU power than both of these combined. Stadia is running off of an Intel 2.7 gigahertz processor with a combined 9.5 megabytes of L2 and L3 cache. The data rate for 720p at 60 frames per second with stereo sound is 10 megabits per second. And you're gonna to wanna to remember that bit for a little later when I compare PlayStation now to Stadia. At 20 megabits per second, you also can receive 1080p at 60 frames per second with 5.1 surround, unless you are using Stadia Base. In that case, it would still be restricted to stereo sound. And for Stadia Pro members, if you have a 35 megabits per second internet speed, you can achieve 4K at 60 frames per second with 5.1 surround sound. And in the future, we are getting support for 8K and 120 frames per second. So this is gonna really open this up. And this is the highest quality for cloud gaming that we have yet. 4K at 60 frames per second is really big. And we're hoping to see that through the other platforms. And I'll talk about that when we get to them. Our next platform is PlayStation Now. Pricing is a little different. For Google, you get to either play for free and full price games or $10 a month and discounted games. For you, if you wanna play PlayStation Now, you have the option of a seven day free trial, which is great. So you can really test out PlayStation Now and see if it's for you. And if you are considering PlayStation Now as your cloud gaming platform, I do suggest that you do the seven day free trial. After that, you do get $20 for a month, or you can pay for three months for $45 or subscribe for a whole year for $100. Of course, you do have to keep in mind if you're gonna be playing enough to benefit from paying $100. If you're not sure about paying, you also don't wanna pay $20 a month every month instead of just paying for the whole year. So you really do have to keep in mind how long you're gonna be playing your games for, how often you're gonna use this platform before you buy. Unlike Stadia, where you can simply just stop paying the $10 a month, and even if you don't pay the $10 a month, the titles that you have, you could still play for free because you already bought them. And that's a really great thing with Stadia Base. The drawback from PlayStation Now for me is the restriction of resolution. You can get 60 frames per second, and the frame rate is what is going to fluctuate based on your internet speed but the resolution is cut back to 720p. So games that are actually really high quality don't look very great because their resolution is knocked down so much. So if that's a deal breaker for you, like it is for me, then skip ahead. <laughs> and I'm gonna be leaving the timestamps for each and every comparison down below in the description. So along with PlayStation Now, you do get to download those games and the games that you do download to your PC are going to be higher quality. And they're gonna have all their features. Unlike PlayStation Now, when you stream the game, you get some features lacking. 
Not everything is included because they simply can't perform that kind of operation for some reason. You are able to play all the games, but these are not cross compatible and you cannot play PlayStation downloaded games versus PlayStation Now streaming games together, which is unfortunate. But the minimum requirement is five megabytes per second meaning that your 720p games are going to be very easy to achieve. But there are other restrictions. You do have to have Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or newer and is only compatible with devices that meet the minimum specifications of an i3 processor at 2 GHz, 300 MB of storage, and 2 GB of RAM, or 3.8 GHz A10, which is the AMD processor. Preferably better, along with the 300 megabytes storage and 2 gigabytes of RAM is through all of those. But you also get to play PlayStation Now on the PlayStation 4. So if you have one of those, you're all set. You don't have to go buy a somewhat decent PC to play games. And I'm not a fan of having to buy a whole desktop or brand new laptop to be able to play these games. And that's why Stadia stands out so much because you don't have to and it works everywhere. If you're on a computer, you can play with a keyboard and mouse, or you can play with the DualShock 4 and a list of supported devices, although any of them are compatible. Sony does not guarantee that these third-party controllers will work. And for your PlayStation, you can use, of course, the four wireless DualShock 4 controllers, but when you are on your PC, you are limited to two wired DualShock 3 controllers. So that is a restriction that you're going to get with PlayStation Now on the PC. What is great about this is that VR is actually compatible with PlayStation Now if you play a VR specific game. Otherwise, of course, your game is not gonna be compatible with VR technology. You do get some limited PlayStation Network features, which is great, so you do have some social aspects. And if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription, you do have that cloud storage. But if all of this sounds okay to you, not too restricting, not too expensive, whatever, Along with all of the stuff PlayStation Now comes with, you also get 750 plus games. And that's really great, especially since most of those are for free. As far as I could tell, at least uh, I don't actually have a subscription to PlayStation Now. I should probably try it out, you know, but I don't have a Windows computer. So yeah, <laughs> so you're actually going to be able to play all these games for free. And it's kind of really cool, but you know, there are drawbacks and it's really up to you. I'll give you my opinion about this at the end. So something else that's coming out soon and really hasn't had a lot of information shed on is xCloud. This is a really cool platform. And of course, with its legendary X, it's being made by Microsoft. Microsoft isn't really shared what the specifications of the service are or many details about pricing. So we're really left up to question. What we do know is that they're going to be using the 54 Azure regions and that means that those servers that they have and they currently have domain over will be able to streamline their services to much of the globe. So that's very good information to have. We can look at the Azure virtual machines with GPU capabilities. I took the lowest end to the highest end with six cores in each so that I could limit the amount of CPU usage and just show off what the GPU performance capabilities are. So the two choices I picked were in the NC series, the version one NC series and version three. NC six was my choice. NC six for the NC series was six cores at 24 threads with the Intel Eon E5-2690 version three. Along with this processor, you get 56 gigabytes of RAM and 340 gigabytes of storage. So if this is what you got with xCloud as your platform, you'd still be able to game pretty well just based off of that CPU performance. But when we look at the GPU, for NC6, you actually only get half of a GPU. The GPU is the NVIDIA K80, and the GPU at full performance can perform at 8.73 teraflops at single precision. And with this cut in half, we get about 4.35 teraflops of performance. That's still pretty good. But moving on to the NCV3 or the NC6S version 3, the Azure server package, you can get the same processor at a newer version, version 4, with 6 cores and 28 threads. 
In total, there are 14 cores on this device, but they are cut back. You do get 112 gigabytes of RAM and 336 gigabytes of storage. And you do get the NVIDIA V100. This gives you 15.7 teraflops of single precision performance, and that kind of dwarfs the Stadia. But the reason why I don't think they will be using this is because of what the Xbox One X is currently like. It gives you 12 gigabytes of RAM and it gives you an octa-core AMD Jaguar CPU that's clocked at 2.3 gigahertz and gives you six teraflops of GPU performance. And that's a lot less than what we get with the Azure servers. Although we do get more cores, we don't have as, as much RAM and we don't have as powerful of a GPU in comparison to the NVIDIA V100. But if we took an average of all of this, I'm sure we could come across seeing xCloud as a good contender for Stadia, although there is no pricing, so this is really just for show. Again, this isn't what we are getting for xCloud, but this is similar to what we may be getting for xCloud performance, so I just wanted to throw it in there just to give reference. But moving on to GeForce Now, this is actually one of the biggest contenders. You get over 400 titles, and right now it is in beta, so actually completely free. The minimum specs is that you support Windows 7 or OS X 10.10, .10, and that you have a dual core CPU clocked at at least two gigahertz and at least four gigabytes of RAM. And the minimum specification for your GPU is that it supports DirectX 11, and they would prefer it being above G4600 series or GTX 800M series, the AMD Radeon HD 3000 or Intel HD Graphics 2000. Anything that is above these specifications for Windows or OS X, of course, will work with GeForce Now. And that's really great because that covers a lot of ground as well for the PC and Mac games. But you also get to use GeForce Now on the Shield TV. You may already know this if you watched my previous video or have just been keeping up with the device in general. A new version is supposed to be coming out soon, so we should be seeing even better performance on the Shield TV. Although, either way, we still get pretty decent performance through GeForce Now. With the compatibility, we get to use the DualShock 4 controllers, Xbox, and Logitech controllers, but we do not get to use third-party controllers, which is unfortunate, but at least we get to use these and we don't get restricted frame rate or heavily restricted resolutions. For GeForce Now, we actually only need 15 megabytes of internet speed for 720p at 60 frames per second. This is more than both PlayStation Now and Stadia right now at 720p you can get for 5 megabytes per second for a PlayStation Now and for Stadia you can get five, 10 megabits per second and 720p. So this is definitely the most, so this is the least compressed game, but you still can get 25 megabits per second at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Only drawback is there is no 4K support and GeForce will probably be supporting 4K, although they're not doing that right now and they're still in beta. So I would look out for that, but that's what we have about GeForce Now. The downside is I couldn't really find specifications. So we can determine that it's not really that intensive and not being able to find server specifications is kind of a little mysterious. Although it's okay because this is supported by Nvidia and surely they'd be using high-end graphics for this in the first place, being it's their own platform and they're really trying to show you performance and they specialize in creating graphical processing units. So we're not really concerned about the specifications, although we don't like to see that there are minimum specs for your computer. When you use Stadia, it's just being able to use Chrome. This, you have to have certain minimum requirements and a certain type of GPU, whether it's integrated or not. We do like to see that we can play on the Shield TV, although we are expecting Stadia to work on this as well. But since we can't really accurately compare this, we're gonna move on to Shadow. Shadow is another platform, and the specs for this are a GPU GTX 1080, which gives you about nine teraflops of GPU performance, which is pretty great. You also get 12 gigabytes of RAM, and you also get 250 gigabytes of storage. You do get 4K support for these games, and you can get 4K at 60 frames per second, or 1080p at 144 frames per second, which is still really good. So we're actually happy to see that 1080p at 144 frames per second 
is there because we want to have a good FPS when we're playing games, especially when they're high pace. There are minimum specifications for your operating system and this is pretty typical. This is something that we saw similarly with Stadia, but the minimum specs are pretty low. Windows 7 at 32 or 64 bits does work and OS X 10.10, Ubuntu 18.4, or Android 7 or iOS 11. Of course, newer versions of these operating systems is preferred. So something that's not so great about this is that you don't actually get to choose your quality of gaming. It's just based off of internet speed. So if you are capable of 1080p at 144 or capable at 4K at 60 frames per second, it's just gonna do that. There is probably a toggle for that. I haven't gone into shadow and actually tried this out, but I'm sure you probably know more about this than I do. But it is requiring a minimum of 15 megabytes per second, and you can try it for $10 for 10 days or $25 a month with auto renewal or $35 a month for a single month. And the performance we're getting from Shadow has been pretty consistent, although there are still issues with this. This is a lower end third party platform, not a big name like Microsoft or Google or Sony or Nvidia. So we're not seeing something super high end here, but we're seeing something that's getting to be reliable and still has good features. There are a decent amount of games for Shadow. I, I'm suggesting Shadow as a good platform, although Stadia definitely seems like it's still gonna dwarf all the other technology, especially since they're already planning for 8K and no other company is even close to doing that yet. Now, the biggest cloud gaming platform that took me forever to get all the pricing and stuff and data down was Parsec. Parsec is a free service for local hosting and you can rent a cloud computer from them or more realistically, you can rent a cloud computer from Amazon or Paperspace. But the rental comes in certain packages ranging from around 50 cents to a little under $2 an hour. And this isn't something that I'm personally in favor for seeing you have to pay hourly and that could save you serious money and that's a good idea although i prefer the monthly being able to actually have the option to play whenever i want as opposed to oh i don't have enough money to play today so sucks to suck uh but the amazon packages are the oz g2.2x large g3s extra large g3.4 extra large and then we have the paperspace p4000 and paperspace p5000 and you can go check out those specifications on their sites. But of course, you can also just watch this short part. The G2.2 extra large is 77 cents an hour, and that's not that big of a deal. But you get an Intel Eon E52670 processor, which has eight cores. You get 15 gigabytes of RAM and a NVIDIA Grid K520 GPU that gives you 2.29 teraflops of performance and you get four gigabytes of GPU RAM. With Amazon Web Services G3S, you get a it at 93 cents an hour. Intel Eon E5-2686 with four cores, 30 gigabytes of RAM and the Nvidia Tesla M60, which is 4.83 teraflops and eight gigabytes of GPU performance. Uh, so I'm going as I'm going through these, you can kind of see that the GPU performance is scaled and you're definitely getting better performance if you pay more. So the $1.88 an hour is an Intel Eon E5-2686, as the previous version was. You get 12 gigabytes of RAM and the NVIDIA Tesla M60. This is also the GPU that you get in the last version, so there's no real difference here, and it's still something that we like to see. It's a pretty good GPU. Although we do get better performance in the paper space section. With the paper space P4000, you get to pay at 51 cents an hour and you get an Intel Eon E52623 with eight cores. You also get 30 gigabytes of RAM and an Nvidia Quadro P4000, which is why paper space has the P4000 there. That has 5.3 teraflops of GPU performance and eight gigabytes of GPU RAM. So that's really good. But the best deal so far is the Paperspace P5000 giving you an Intel Eon E5-2623 processor with eight cores 
and 30 gigabytes of RAM with NVIDIA Quadro P5000, which is 8.9 teraflops and 16 gigabytes of GPU RAM. That's really the best one that we get. So that's something you should probably look into if you're into this, but you only get a limited library of games at 46 games. And of course you could always put your own games on there as it is just a cloud server and you can download any game but it doesn't guarantee that its software is going to work well or work with it. So downloading third-party games that aren't officially listed as supported by Parsec is not a great idea. Storage and pricing is kind of strange. You do get to pay hourly, but you do have to pay for a balance. So you have different names for this. Refill is $10 that you get to have. So that's your budget of $10 for gameplay. Or you can do the starter pack, which is $20, or Jumbo, which is $45. So you get to scale and to how much you are paying, uh, just to give you a little bit of a limit. Uh, you do also have to pay for storage. It's, it's $10 per 100 gigabytes. So for 100 gigabytes, you're getting $10 a month, 200 is $20 a month, and 500 is $50 a month. And those are the pricings that are available. But all of this, all this pricing is still variable depending on the location that you're at, because some servers are not accessible and some servers are farther away, closer, and they change the pricing based on where you are. So you definitely have to check that out for yourself. My personal favorite is Stadia still. The only real competitor is NVIDIA GeForce now. Giving us free beta now is great, but we can't expect NVIDIA to keep the whole system free. Stadia base is free, but you get a restricted resolution and games are full price. Although GeForce Now does not have many compatible devices, they make up for it in allowing HD resolution, unlike PlayStation Now. GeForce Now also holds a vast game library, as many as PlayStation Now, but not as limited as Shadow or Parsec. Although with Parsec, you are just renting cloud devices and you can just use whatever game. Technically, it's not gonna work as good as it should. If we had more information about xCloud, it is possible they could beat GeForce Now for second or possibly first place in this race. But Google simply has higher quality streaming and more compatible than most other platforms aside from Shadow. Though the current library is limited, we get to use Stadia with best graphic performance available. And the Stadia library is certainly going to grow, and we're expecting that to be pretty rapid. It is also optimized for seamless gaming, so that's good. Google is really taking pride in how well they are managing compression. And I've talked about that several times before. Though these companies are trying to do the same thing, using servers that aren't really the company's limits their ability in terms of pricing. If we exclude GeForce Now from the model, it being in beta, we can see that Stadia is still the best priced for performance and features. Google's gone all out and bumping the idea of paying hourly, which is which if you are a hardcore gamer will turn you off immediately being that you don't know how much you're going to end up paying and you can't project that as well. PlayStation now does restrict you at 720p. So there are really big limitations there. So for me, hardware and all, I think Stadia is the best choice. And that is my recommendation for you. Of course, take all the information as you will and form your own opinion. That is what this is about. All in all, I vote Stadia. Google is doing great things with this and I really can't wait for all this out in November. If you agree with me, give me this video a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe and hit that bell for upload notifications. Comment down below for more information, questions, or suggestions. You can also follow me on all my socials for more updates. My name is Jason and this has been Inevitable Space.